Before the show starts, that viewer discretion is advised. Diver Down. Diver Down is the brew of choice tonight. It's a red ale. It's delicious. It's like going down every time you 
take a sip. Absolutely smooth. What's good, everybody? Welcome to Drone Brews. It is another glorious Wednesday. I've actually lost track of what day it is because of the holiday on Monday that um, everything's just sort of been an absolute blur. Uh, we'll allow it. We're going to allow. We're going to allow it. Um, so tonight's show, we have Hey Castellou from Drone XL, formerly of Drone DJ, uh, joining us. Uh, we did do a test call to verify audio, and the test call did not go so good. Um, and then I ended up pulling Sean Oz off to the side and checking the audio with Sean. So we did get whatever the hell was happening fixed. I hope it's fixed. If it's not, I will literally throw this software out the window because I'm so sick of it. So, alrighty. But uh, let's do like we always do. We'll go ahead, jump in the chat, say hello to everybody. We've got Fly High Wisconsin, Rocco, Drone Warships in the house, Sam Burns, Weekend Droners, Rob C, Jeep Dogs, Bob Casey, Joseph Myers, Alex Pops, John AZ. We got Joseph Leon, B Man 80. What's happening? Michael, how are you, sir? Good to see you as always. Leno's here. Ooh, 103 in Las Vegas. That's pretty hot. All right. So it looks like we got a pretty good show. We've got some cool things to talk about. We're going to talk about that uh, DJI, so I guess, law. It's not really a loss. It's a victory. It's sort of a victory for them because as according to the judge, they are not going to have to stop selling their drones here in the country. Uh, Autel filed a patent that wasn't apparently patentable. Pat Fuck it. We're not even going to say it. There's the first F-bomb of the night. There we go. And we're already off. These beers go down so smooth. So you guys are in for a wild shit show of a show because we're four deep at this point, four deep and a shot. We do not have any shots tonight because I could not wake up and function the following morning very well. It was tough. So we're just going to try to keep it like, you know, moderately functional in the morning. That's the game plan. So we've got Hay coming in at 9.15. Um, that's what time I'm going to bring him in. He'll be in for about a half hour or so. We'll chat a little bit about Drone XL, some of the happenings. We'll talk about some of the articles that he's recently covered surrounding around the Autel thing. And uh, yeah, so happenings, what do we got going on right now? So it looks like the Evo 2 Rugged Bundles. Um, did show up today. Those are starting to ship. If you haven't already, you may notice that you've gotten shipping notifications. That's because we got them finally. Finally, finally, finally. Which is a good thing. That also means that hopefully their production is starting to ramp up to fulfill the demand of those drones and we can start getting those out to other people as well. Uh, Mavic Airs will be back in stock, I believe on Friday, which is a good thing. So if you haven't already got your hands on one of those, definitely do that. Mechanic, thank you so much. I do appreciate the 99 cent super chat. As always, thank you very much. Uh, do you think they will add live stream on the Mavic Air 2? I don't know if they will. I haven't seen it yet. Uh, hopefully, hopefully so. You guys got to keep track of these F-bombs because apparently I've gotten several e emails from people you know, asking, they're like, you know, I can't watch your show. I can't watch your content with my kids. Um, and I'm like, first off, I'm like, why would you let your kids watch this show? This is not, this is the drone channel for everything else. Like there's a hundred other drone channels that are PG. Um, this is for everybody else. So I don't, I'm, I'm catering to that, that 1% of the people that, uh, just like democracy. Um, so there you go. There it is. Alrighty, so Robert's got the f bomb countered down. We're at one. We're not intentionally doing it, but if it happens, it happens. Alrighty. So, like I said, hi, we'll be in. We'll talk about that. Um, been a slow week. Um, haven't really done much flying with the Mavic Air Two. I've actually shifted gears back over to the Evo Two Pro. Flying that. There's been some new beta software that's been pushed. So I'm testing out some of the things that I had issues with to see if they have been corrected. So far, so good. All good things thus far, which is pretty cool. All right, good. No kids to listen. Bingo. All righty. 
patent for folding legs. Um, you know, here, here's, here's my thing, you know, with the whole patent thing, and we'll talk more about this later. You know, I, I compare it to, I guess it's the similar, similar to, you know, patent and a lug nut, you know, how many different ways can you make a lug nut for a car, right? You can't make it too very different. There's only so many ways it's going to screw on. Um, I, th I compare a lot of that to what Autel did. They just went and tried to suck up a bunch of patents in hopes that they were going to able to battle it out in our court system. Because again, our market is the largest market for Autel. They don't distribute it, you know, really worldwide yet. So they were trying to capture some of the sales. I, I mean, again, I say this again, and people argued with me, but I think that that's the wrong way to go about trying to innovate or create sales. I think that if you're going to try to, you know, I guess hit your competitor at the kneecaps, that's the wrong thing to do. The thing you should be doing is figuring out a way to motivate your buyers to purchase your product, whether it be by price or innovation, that's the right thing to do. And too often it's easier for them to snag up a lawyer and just wrap people up in court. We see it all too often. Um, so yeah, and not only that, it's two Chinese companies, it's not two American companies. So really it's got no place in our courtroom if, you know, if I had a say, but there it is. Uh, 113 people in here and no Ken, do we need them? Ken who? Who? Ken who? Who? Ken, who you, Sam, who, who are you talking about? Who are you talking about? Ken who? Um, I don't know. Oh, you were lagging. Okay. All right. All right. Good. I was, you had me worried, man. I'm like, oh, I'm right here. Michael, thank you very much. And Matt, thank you so much. Lunchbox. Oh, you're calling me Lunchbox. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I don't know what that really means. But <laughs> let's have another shot or drink or whatever. Because obviously you can't drink and fly. So here's the game plan tonight. If the audio completely goes sideways, I am going to just say, screw this, and we'll start using StreamYards. Not really a big fan of StreamYards at all. I think it looks too generic, and it just it doesn't have all my little things that I like to do, like all the buttons. So, you know, worst case, maybe we'll just use StreamYards when I want to have more than one guest on at a time because it's obviously simpler to do. Um, we'll have to see. I don't know. Or I just say screw it and I go to bed. And if if the audio sucks, if the audio is good, then we leave it. Somebody says my lips are off. Well, let's take a look at that. My lips are usually always off. We'll add a we'll add a little delay into this audio. There we go. We'll add a little delay. All right, there we go. Only 134 likes. I appreciate it. You were lagging. Yeah, you know what it is? I think YouTube, it has been lagging a little bit as well. I think it's lagging in general. All righty. Mouth not aligned with the sound. Could be your internet. Anybody else having any sort of audio issues? Anybody noticing like mouth isn't synced up with the audio? Anyone? No. Bueller going once, going twice. Okay. I did add a, I just added a three second, a three millisecond delay to the audio to try to trick it. Sometimes that works. Yeah. Sometimes I, I noticed I'm watching the stream here on the screen and it's actually slower than my tablet. Makes no sense. Makes no sense. All right. Okay. Let's, uh, let's jump into. Let's jump into some news here. All righty. So recently there has been an update out for the fly application. If you haven't already downloaded that, be sure to go ahead and do so. It does have some bug fixes and does help prevent some crashing on iOS devices. If you haven't downloaded the new fly app, be sure to go ahead and download that. Also, there was an update for the Altel Explorer app. It's been in beta for the past couple of uh, weeks, and they finally just now released the full-blown version, which, again, 
lots of bug, bug fixes, and they also increased the altitude um, that we're able to fly. They brought it back up to what it was before they capped it. So I'm not really sure what's going on with that. Um, I know a lot of people complained that they capped the altitude like they do with DJI. So I'm not sure if that has something to do with it or not, but that is fixed. You're going to want to go ahead and download that update. It's a substantial update for iOS. As far as the Android device goes, it's just an incremental update. There was really nothing wrong with the Android version, but I noticed it did improve performance as far as uh, iOS goes. Cactus pornography, I mean, dronography. Uh, thank you very much for that $5 super chat. I appreciate that. Some reason I saw a P and not a, uh, not a D, uh, but that happens sometimes that happens sometimes. All righty. What we got here? Let's see. Drone Wars says, okay, it's been fun. Goodbye everyone. I'm going to poke cardboard Ken Heron. There's nothing like poking a sleeping giant. All right. You have fun with that, Daniel. We'll see you next time. Uh, DJI is still having issues when exporting logs out. Sometimes they are not complete. You know, I haven't I haven't taken a shot at exporting the logs except for I pulled some logs to send to DJI when I had that wreck. Um, but I haven't had any issues with logs. I'll have to look further further into that. I did notice on the previous version, the cache video was not recording sometimes. So you know how you get that cache preview of a flight. I was not getting that sort of like DVR preview um, in the application. So some something must have changed because now it's happening. So um, we'll have to see. You know, every time they fix the app, it gets a little bit better, but they still have a long way to go with this application. Really, what they need to do is they need to add some more granular control um, to the gimbal and they need to add some manual control uh, for the for the. Uh, yeah, because it's a little, it's the slightest bit aggressive. If you're not careful, um, it gets crazy. I was trying to export a log once and it hurt a lot. I can imagine. I can imagine. We did get back a, um, a report from DJI on the drone. We, we had to send that drone into them and they deemed that it was operator error. Which, which I knew before we even sent it to them. Surprisingly, with all that damage, it wasn't too bad. It was like 120, 130 bucks uh, worth of damage to the drone. So um, I was expecting worse, but that was actually pretty good. But totally, that was totally my fault. All right, so it's it's uh, 913. Whoa, thank you very much. Oh, Zach, what are you doing, man? You don't ever have to do that, dude. Let the record show that he actually did pay me. Let the record show he actually did pay me. For the first time in forever, Groneworks Pro actually sent me a payment. I'm kidding. He gives me drones and stuff and lets me ride in the Jeep shotgun, so it's fine. 113 for the replacement. $113. Add it to the tab. Add it to the tab. We have a hell of a tab going right now. All righty, let's go ahead. I'm going to dial hi right now. Hey, I, I don't know. I got to ask him how they really pronounce his name. Um, so I'm going to give him a call. So what I found is that if he calls me, the audio is jacked. If I call somebody, the audio is fine. All right, here we go. We're going to see if this is going to work because if it breaks, it breaks. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And hopefully it doesn't. Crosses my fingers. Hey, man. How are you? Doing good, buddy. I'm going to bring you into the stream. So it's a funny story. I was listening yeah. to our audio before, and you didn't have any audio. I didn't have any audio. <laughs> no. So so hopefully this works. I'm going to push you into the stream right now. Three, two, one. Here we go. How are you, man? All right. I don't hear any bugs, man. Sounds good on my end. So awesome. how, how are you doing, man? Pretty good. It's pretty good. Appreciate you having me on the show. I appreciate you taking the time to come on. You know, I, I have actually I've been wanting to uh, talk to you for a little bit from, you know, way back when you started out with Drone DJ. And I figure, you know, now that you're doing the Drone XL deal, 
I figured yeah. now is a good time to go ahead and bring you on the stream. So I guess the first thing is, you know, what was the conception behind Drone XL? What was the inspiration behind that? Um, really because I needed something else from Drone DJ. Uh, I wanted to strike out on my own. Uh, I'd been working with Seth Weintraub, and you might know he also runs the sites uh, 9 to 5 Mac yeah. and Electric.co, and those are massive sites, and I've worked with Seth for about two and a half years, which was great. So he's a great guy, and we get along really well. Uh, but for what I wanted to do with Drone DJ, the underlying mechanics, basically the arrangement that we had, they didn't really work for me. Um, and I felt that the, the large sites kind of di dictated the way that uh, Drone DJ had to operate as well. And I had different ideas. And in the end, there was really, yeah, at least as far as, far as I was concerned, uh, no other option than to just strike out on myself. And um, then when it comes to Drone Excel, I just wanted a name that was short and catchy, easy to remember, and it had the word drone in it. And now we have Drone Excel. So that's basically the long and short of it. I think I think the new site looks pretty stellar. I like the overall look and aesthetic. I'm, I'm a big aesthetic guy. I like the, you know, certain flat looks and the cleanliness and, you know, the ease of use behind the site is, I, I think, less cluttered, um, in my opinion. Um, but that's a bold move to go out on your own because I know, you know, 9 to 5 Max is a huge entity and um, that's a huge risk to uh, take on yourself. But I see that you've actually made quite a bit of industry connections over the past couple of years, though. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, um, like I said, I mean, working with Seth and the other side was great because I, I learned quite a bit from them. But I learned much more even by just running Drone DJ because I made all the connections, like you said, in the industry. You got to know a lot of different people. And that's for sure gave me a kickstart right now when I launched uh, Drone Excel. I mean, I already know the lay of the land. I know who to talk to, who to reach out to. I know people in the uh, YouTube community, on Twitter, uh, within DJI, within Autel, within Skydio. So in that sense, it was much easier. Uh, the difference, of course, is when I launched Drone DJ, I had the benefit of getting traffic from those massive websites being kind of funneled over to Drone DJ. So Drone DJ was able to take off much faster initially. Sure. Uh, with Drone Excel, it's kind of like you started from scratch again, which can be frustrating. But at the same time, um, I know exactly what I want. And for instance, what you mentioned, uh, aesthetics. Yeah, um, the the layout of Drone DJ was predefined, if you will. I mean, it was yeah. already set up. They weren't going to change that. And I wanted something else with uh, with Drone Excel, and I wanted to be able to. Um, when you scroll through the website, is to be able to scan for headlines much quicker and just see more news items as you scroll through the site. And I think, in that sense, the news sites uh, I think does better. But so you've you've had a chance to cover a lot of interesting stories lately, and obviously one of them is this whole sort of debacle between Altel and DJI. So I want to sort of get your thoughts on this because I know, you know, I research things, but I don't have near as much time or bandwidth to sit there and and have somebody go through all the little nuances of every single article and, yep. and verify the you know the validity of everything. So so give me some more background of the latest update with the Autel DJI situation as of right now. Yeah, I think the the dispute between Autel and DJI goes way way back even way before I started Drone DJ and what I understand of it is that apparent I mean one of there's there's three disputes actually. So, Let me... I think you're you're lagging a little bit there, hi. Good old Skype. <laughs> lagging. I got one and patents it's by Autel. So there's some ambiguity there. Um, about what, 10 days ago, uh, Stepto, the law firm for Autel, they made a big splash of, hey, we have a win. And then about a week later, DJI comes and said, well, you know what? Actually, we appealed and we won on all three patents disputes. So it seems that DJI came out as the clear winner. Um, what I did find interesting, though, is that so if you take, for instance, you take a DJI Mavic 2 Pro and you know how those props are marked, right? So you cannot yeah. put yeah. this prop on the wrong arm. Super clever system, smart, not just DJI. Autel does the same thing. If you take the DJI Mavic Air 2, you can actually take this prop off and mount it on the I, opposite arm. I noticed that. 
Yeah, and you have an issue um, because if you take off, your drone will flip over and crash land, basically. So I assumed that DJI knew they were going to lose and that therefore, with their latest drone, the DJI Mavic Air 2, they would have changed the prop mount system. However, if they now have one or three uh, patent disputes, that really doesn't make all that much sense anymore. So, right. uh, yeah, I researched it quite a bit, but there's still things that I don't know if we're ever going to get a clear You know, he- here's what I don't get. How, how does the largest... You know, right, let me say, yeah, no, it's the largest drone manufacturer, the most popular drone manufacturer in the world. Let something like this, you got a beer, you got a beer. I see that. Yeah. Good deal. This is, dro- this is drone yeah. brews. Um, so how does the largest drone manufacturer in the world just let something like this go under the radar to the point where they have to go to court? I don't know. Um I've gotten to know DJI as a very smart company. They they respond very quickly. They're very aggressive. Uh, they're smart and calculated in the risks they take. I can only assume that it must have been a calculated risk and they figured, okay, maybe we'll get away with this. Maybe we'll just see how this evolves. I mean, if you think of it, I mean, they've launched, what, the Phantom, the original DJI Mavic Air, uh, the regular Mavic Pro, like all those drones have that same locking mechanism for the props. Right. So, Right. They've sold tons and tons and tons of the of those drones with that mount system. If they would have been, let's say, more careful and switched to another system right from the start, they would have sold all these drones that are less user friendly. So maybe they just said, you know what, we'll just see what happens, run with it, and if we ever get taken to court, we'll see what happens at that point. So, so okay, so you're saying that they sort of just said, all right, we're going to risk it. It's cheaper not to get out in front of this than it is to actually. Uh, have you know a, a lawyer basically preemptively go after i'll tell on this you can you can be more cautious perhaps but gotcha. then you wouldn't have been able to sell all these thousands of drones with a more user-friendly more foolproof prop mount system so and i, I don't know if this is true but i can imagine maybe they said you know what let's just run with it we'll see what happens if it goes to court it goes to court meanwhile we'll just make drones and sell drones that makes if sense that, that's true that wouldn't surprise me one bit because now, that kind of it's the DJI narrative, I think. Now, you think that was sort of the reason why we didn't see the Mavic Air 2 earlier? Because in history, let's say if we go back and look at the first Mavic Air, that was around January. You think that DJI wanted to release this sooner or that they were still trying to figure out what they were going to do with the prop situation? Uh-huh. Well, they were they were going to include ADS-B, right? Air Sense technology. And that was only going to go as soon as uh, January 1st, basically 2020. So I don't think they were aiming to launch that drone earlier than uh, the beginning of this year. Uh, they were later than that. That might have had yeah. to do with coronavirus. Probably did. That's what I'm thinking. I know that they, yeah, they shut down their offices. I know that supply chain has been affected. So uh, there were issues there for sure. Now, have you gotten a chance to go hands-on with the Mavic Air 2 so far? Oh, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. W- w- what do you think of that drone so far? I think it's uh, I think it's a great drone. I think it's probably the best drone for most people. It's not the best drone for somebody with very particular uh, needs. I mean, if you're totally into videography or uh, you need low light performance for photography, then this is not the drone. But right. for most people, in most cases, this drone is hard to beat, especially at that price point. So you had a chance to go hands on, and I think you still have it. You had the Evo two as well. Uh, Mm -hmm. back at CES. I know we were all sort of enamored with that because of the specs and everything, and it it sort of blindsided us. Um, What are your thoughts on that? Because it it seems to be a mixed bag as far as the industry goes, because you have some creators, they're just sort of like, I don't really know. You have some that absolutely love it. And then you got the ones that are sort of still caught in the middle where they're just, you know, unsure. I think, first of all, uh, it's not a healthy situation to have one drone manufacturer dictate and and own so much market shares. I agree. I think it's great to have competition, and I'm all for Parrot and Skydio and Autel. Uh, Back at CES, I was able to use the uh, 8K version. Um, I thought in most regards the drone was really good. The only issue I had with was uh, had to do with the connectivity. So I would fly, and I would fly like over a lake, so there was like no obstruction. I was in the middle of a forest. So there was, wasn't really that could, anything that could interfere, right. and still I would lose the connection. And nothing would happen, but you would just lose it intermittently. And I think we're probably spoiled with how good the latest generations of DJI drones are. You just kind of don't expect that to happen anymore. Um, I think they did resolve that, though, because now I have the 6K version here, and I haven't had those kind of issues at all. So no, I the 6K's been flawless. 
yeah, it's been really good. But but you know, to to that point you made, you said something sort of interesting there that you know it's 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 sort of un, you know not a healthy situation to have one manufacturer have so much weight yeah. in the the industry. But I think you know something that we often overlook is we haven't had a manufacturer step up and provide yeah. really the quality and the reliability that we know from DJI's perspective. I mean, oh, I agree. I mean, I think that's probably why so many people love DJI, but also right. hate DJI, right? Because exactly. It's, it's a mixed bag. And uh, I'm a fan of their products. I use them quite a bit, but I would prefer to have a different market where you have more players who have a more equal distribution of market I agree. share. I agree. DJI owning the place. Um, because having with them having such a huge market share, it allows them to kind of dictate when and what's going to happen next, right? And I don't think that's healthy. I don't think they should have that no. kind of control. No, it's that definitely not. I think, you know, as far as with like Altel goes, I think what they need to do is work on getting distribution worldwide. Like it's it's not a successful business plan to sell just to the U.S. If you want to win the game, you got to be able to distribute, you know, globally, essentially. I think that's yeah. that's ultimately what they have to do. They got to. I agree, and I, I think it's unfortunate that both Autel and Skydio have had issues getting drones in the hands of people, right? I mean, right. So when Autel came out, the specs were amazing. Everyone's like, holy shit, we never saw this coming. I want to get my hands on that drone. And then it gets delayed and delayed and delayed. And uh, I think what happens is when... When people get excited and they're ready to pull the trigger and they want to go out and buy that drone, if you have them wait for six weeks, a lot of that enthusiasm goes away. And then maybe other options appear or maybe things happen in their life and maybe they won't pull the trigger. Maybe they won't buy that drone anymore. And I think it hurts the manufacturer because they're not getting the sales that they otherwise would have had. And I think Skydio has had the same issue where they have this amazing drone. They... Um, they know it, it's going to sell well, really, but then they sell out so rapidly and they can't make them fast enough. And now people are canceling their orders. They're moving to an Autel drone. Uh, they're probably buying the uh, DJI Mavic Air 2. I mean, you only can spend your money uh, once, right? So people go. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, personally, you know, from, from my perspective, drone pilots, we're impatient fucks. I mean, we really are. We, we have zero patience. And if oh, yeah. I, I, you know, I, you know, I don't know, you know, if you think about it, there's a lot of women out there that probably married us and that are thinking to themselves, I wish I could do this over again because you, you, we're in, you know what I mean? We're impatient because we're like, we want it now. We want to yeah. fly now. And it's just, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, I get I it. Think, I get it though. Well, it's not just being impatient, right? It's almost being spoiled, spoiled as well because drones are so good and they're so capable. Yeah. And maybe sometimes we forget how capable they are. Maybe we should appreciate that a little bit more. Before we say, oh, oh, we got 6K. Well, now I want 8K or now I need whatever. Fill it in. Um, Did you find yourself utilizing the 8K at all? I, I, I mean, I haven't shot in it since a couple 8K, of videos. 8K, 8K, is an, 8K is a nightmare. You're going you're gonna to shoot a whole bunch of footage and then edit that and then have people watch it on the smartphone. I mean, it's great if you want to like crop in post-production and I, I get all that stuff. Um, I think and maybe for you, that's the same. My challenge is always been much more like i want to be able to create but then also edit and get it out quickly yeah and if I know speed. That people are going to watch it oh well, yeah speed and if i know that they're going to watch it on the phone anyway it's going to be on facebook it's going to be on youtube then 4k doesn't really matter that much because you can get really good 1080p quality as well if you have a decent camera for sure so i think sometimes um it's more benefit i mean it depends on who you're talking to but i think in my case it might be more beneficial to be able to get stuff out much faster than to focus on this amazing quality and now have 8k video that's um for in most cases you won't really be able to appreciate anyway i i agree you know and that's and that's one of the things that i think you know goes often unsaid you know on youtube because everybody gets hell-bent on pixels and yeah. um i think we forget a lot of times that 1080p is 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 definitely still good enough i think i just think it's important to understand how that 1080p is actually um Put together, you know, the bit rates have a lot yeah. to do it because I mean, Canon is notorious for having, you know, 1080p footage on their cameras, but it's like, you know, 150, almost 200 megabit, you know, right to the card, which is really? going to give you a really clean image as to where, you know, we're dealing with these cameras, 8K at 120. And, you know, what I've seen with the Evo and uh, people were complaining of stutter on the Pro. And when I went back and look at the card, I'm looking at the right speeds of the, the bit rate. 
and the bit rate is actually really low and i'm thinking that it's almost so low it causes stutter yeah so you lose a lot of you, you lose a lot of lose a lot of then you lose on the other hands it's funny that you mentioned this because uh, i know somebody who shoots a lot of uh, aerial footage uh, in canada and of course the rules are stricter there as well so the dji mavic mini is quite popular but they use their footage uh, for broadcast only so okay it's like, I, I don't need 4k he's like a mavic mini that i can put in my pocket basically and get out and be able to fly because the rules are less strict i can get away with 1080 so they as an organization i think they bought like 20 mavic minis and that's what they fly most i mean they're incredible have drones as well but the mavic mini for them is is the the drone that helps them to get the footage that they need for their new shows how often has the geofencing on a dji drone bit you in the ass in my case, not that much, but I know plenty of people who've been frustrated where they wanted to fly and they should have been able to fly and they couldn't fly. Um, what I don't know, I mean, we, we know that DJI has gone through a number of different generations sure. uh, for G-fencing, so it's getting more precise every time. Uh, so it should become less of an issue, I think, going forward. Um, I don't know how much emphasis they put on making sure that it's as accurate as it could be. Um, I think they do put a lot of time in it. Um, like I said, I haven't experienced much of it, but I know plenty of people who've been frustrated where they want to launch their drone. And if you go by the, by the maps, you should be able to fly and then the drone won't launch. So, yeah, it can be annoying. What's your thought on, on them including that in, in their drones? you think that that is something that they should be doing or you think it should be something that it should be up to the pilot? I, I, I try to ask this question of everybody just sort of see the temperature I think it depends on the kind of drone that you sell. So if I was DJI and I would be selling Mavic Minis, I would include it because chances are that people who buy those drones are probably Beginner. more on the consumer. Yeah, and they might not know all the rules. They might not follow all the safe okay. flying principles. What do you think about like with the Mavic 2 Pro, you know, up towards like, you know, we'll say P4 and Inspire series? I, I would tend to be more lenient. I, I'm sure. thinking about how you would make that work though, but because that that's like a, the next question then right but i mean in theory i would say if you go up the ladder and you buy more expensive more capable drones then the likelihood is you're going to be more of a serious enthusiast or you're going to be a professional user you're going to take on more responsibility you would have more knowledge you would have your part 107 so therefore you should be able to give them more flexibility um how you would make that happen and what kind of criteria you would use i think is still up for debate but i can see how an approach like that would make sense because I think the people that buy Mavic Minis and also buy uh, DJI Mavic Air 2s are probably, or there's a greater likelihood of them being more the recreational type of I mean, that, that makes good sense. Um, yeah, so, I think so, that's what I would try and do. So in sort of talking about this, what do, what do you think with a remote ID? Because I know, you know, when we were all at CES, we were just starting to really see this. You know, they obviously hit us, what was it, the day after Christmas, yeah, FAA, FAA slammed this, you know, like a Christmas gift, like... Yeah that you can't return says, Hey, this, <laughs> this is happening. This is going to happen. And, you know, I asked a lot of, and, and we'll give it to the fact that it was still almost too soon. Like we knew this was going to happen, but we didn't really know when it was sort of like a, a sleeping giant, if you will. What's your thoughts on remote ID where it sits right now? What do you think? What is the course that you see the FA going down? A um, couple of things. I, I am pro remote ID. I understand that you need different rules and regulations in place to have an industry like the drone industry okay. progress. That you're able to do things like package delivery and, and all that good stuff. So I'm pro remote ID. I am not pro remote ID the way it's been proposed by the FAA. Okay. I think a couple of things that are wrong. I mean, first of all, that your drone needs to be connected to the internet at all times, I think is a ridiculous requirement. I don't see that happening. And my biggest concern there would be that if people don't understand and don't like the rule and think it's unreasonable, there's a greater likelihood of them not following the rule. And if they don't follow the rule, then your rules becomes kind of pointless. So I think there's a big worry there. Uh, there's other things. There's a whole range of things. I mean, you have stuff that has to do with your uh, privacy as a pilot. I think uh, those issues need to be resolved as well, but they're maybe easier to resolve. I think the biggest stumbling block for us has been the fact that your drone would have to be connected to the internet at all times. Yeah, I, think that's, I, I just think that's, that's silly. Yes. What, yeah. what do you think about what DJI proposed with that drone, the phone? You know, obviously there were there were some flaws with it. It wasn't uh, perfect. Perfect. I think I think what what DJI is trying to do at least is they're trying to 
get ahead of the game, right? They try to come up with examples of how things might work. So at least you have something to talk about. And I think when you have a complex issue like remote ID, if you if you talk about it all in theory, but you never really fly, right. or you never test it, then how do you know for sure if something actually going to work? I would, and this has nothing to do with DJI, but I would much rather prefer that you try out different things, see what actually works, and then continue with the best examples. And I think that DJI is kind of trying to do that. I mean, they tried it with Aeroscope, now they're trying it with the drone to phone. Um, they're giving you something to say, well, hey, how about this? And then you may like it, you may not like it, you can argue about it, but you have at least something substantial to talk about. And I think that makes a difference, though. It's going to be interesting to play it out. I mean, a lot of people in the industry believe that the 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 decisions already been made and they're you know we're sort of you know being patronized in a sense that you know the comment window was a bunch of bullshit i i feel like it was because you can't you can't ever get a comment from from anybody at the fa you, you would think an organization like that like take the time just just to address the people who you know pay money pay money towards your organization i mean they get five dollars every drone. They get a hundred and fifty dollars for every every remote one. Uh, rem- fuck. I'm fucked up already. Uh, it's it's <laughs> we're foreign. The yeah. Our money, right? Yeah, they, 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 they take our they money. Take our money. Yeah, you know what I mean? Work with for sure. My my concerns are that um, I mean I, I don't know how many comments they've had on other things. I know uh, that for part one of seven, I think it was around five thousand. So. Uh, it seems that having more than 53,000 comments, some of which are like 70 or 80 pages, like take Brendan Schumann's. I mean, he, but he better, of course, because he's in the business. But some of them were super detailed and, and very granular. Yes. Um, we've heard that the FEA already processed and analyzed all those comments. And it makes you wonder when you have the whole coronavirus situation going on, people working from home, some people might be sick and might not be able to work at all. I mean, how the hell do you go through 53,000 comments this fast? And then on top of that, two other things that concern me. One is they want to finalize the rule before the end of this year, not fully implemented, implementation next year, but then more like in a trial setup. So it will probably take another two or three years for that to become. How do you enforce this? You know, how do you enforce this? Were they going to have a cop come over and see you and scan you be like, hey, is that got remote ID? You know, how do you how do you enforce this? That's a good point, too, because so far the enforcement from the FAA hasn't really been that strict. I mean, people have received phone calls and letters like, hey, you really shouldn't fly over 400 feet and all that stuff. But we haven't really had that many cases where people got fined and and got ticketed. I mean, we've seen a few of them, and some of them were pretty dressed. Like the I, guy can, in, uh, I can name what three, three, three instances: the Seattle, yeah. the Seattle uh, Space Needle, where they were setting up the fireworks, where the guy uh, was fined. You had what Vegas? That that was a big one because he yeah. landed yeah. at an airport. Yeah, um, that was in Airport, and then you have Staten Island with the uh, what is it, the Black Hawk helicopter where the Phantom flew into. Oh yeah, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think he got fined, but he got a slap on the wrist for sure. Yeah, and then um, nothing ever happened with that drone that was touting the COVID nineteen task force, I guess. Oh, the one that flew uh, around Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard of anything. No, no. So, so the enforcement uh, is a whole question mark in itself because if the FEA doesn't enforce the rules and they rely on local law enforcement, then you have yeah. to train those police officers so that they know the rules. Um, but going back to your initial question, like the third thing that kind of worries me is that if you look at that um, group of companies that the DJ, uh, that FAA has um, pushed forward as these are the companies that are going to help us to advise us on how we're going to build remote ID. If you look at the companies that are in there, it's like Airbus, AirMap, uh, Amazon, Intel, OneSky, Skyward, T-Mobile, and Wing. Where where are the consumer drone manufacturers? There, there's none. Not, there's none. No, there's nobody in there. Where are, let's say... I mean, we don't have a representation as drone hobbyists and, and drone pilots, but where would be an organization that represents the people that actually fly drones? They're not there. So I think if you look at all those three things, it kind of worries me that the FEA seems to be pushing these rules through quickly, and it feels like they're just going to kind of shove it down our throat. So so I'm sort of seeing a couple of scenarios play out. I, I think whatever's going to happen is is going to inevitably cost cost money, you know? Yeah. For them to be able to report in whatever craft you have, you're going to have, you know, some transmitter or you're only going to be able to allow uh, flight for so many feet or something to that effect or be, you know, restricted to just a field, which would really suck, you know, for a lot of people. 
400 feet in any direction. I mean, if you go to, a, I have an RC model airplane uh, airstrip right in the backyard. Okay. Those guys, those guys cannot and will not fly within 400 feet. It'd be ridiculous. So. Yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's gonna that. suck. Like, yeah, it's gonna cost money. You need more equipment on your drone, so your drone is gonna be more power hungry. It's gonna be heavier. It's gonna reduce your flight time. You need a data plan. <clears throat> like. They're, now they're going to store your data. I mean, how secure is that going to be, right? I mean, there's so many issues. They want to make it available to the public so I can see, hey, Ken is right there flying his expensive Autel drone. Do you want that information to be out there for the public? I mean, th this goes back to us saying, okay, if you have remote ID, let it work as a license plate in the sky. So a police officer can check the information and can say, hey, that's Ken and he's flying his Autel drone. But the general public cannot say, hey, that's Ken and he's flying his Autel drone and he's positioned right there. Yeah, so, I, I, I just don't agree with, you know, from a professional standpoint, I've never agreed with that, you know, knowing where somebody's at. Not that, you know, not that, no, you know, somebody would know how to use that information unless if they publicized yeah. it. You know what I mean? If they say, well, hey, we're going to have this, you know how they do like the, every day the Internet picks what they're going to beat up on tomorrow. Um, you know, if they publicized that and made that information public, then to me, that would be a problem. But if they didn't, maybe not such a big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, but I mean, it's going to be I don't really like it because I think it builds a lot of in instability in the market because, you, you know, you can see DJI putting out these drones, uh, companies that once put out a release, you know, once a year, we don't see those drones very often. I don't hear anything from unique that's, at all. That's Point I wanted to make. Uh, so remote ID almost certainly is not going to be retrofitable to existing drones. So it will mean that all your drones, all the drones that are out there right now, you could only be able to fly them at those designated areas within 400 feet in every direction. You wouldn't be able to retrofitically retrofit it to the drones. So your old drones are basically paperweight now. Yeah. Um, that's another issue right there. I mean, uh, if you if you think about um, Applying something like remote ID to people who drive cars and say all your cars now need to live up to these standards and these requirements, people would be up in arms. And now they try to do it to the drone world. And you might wonder, okay, you can say, yeah, but you can use a drone to spy on people. You can use a drone to drop grenades and all that stuff. True, but you can also use cars and other things in life right. for bad purposes. So I don't think you need to single out drones for that specific reason in itself. Um, I think it's fair to say that law enforcement needs to be able to find out who's flying. I understand that if you have uh, wing drones and UPS drones and Amazon drones flying over urban areas making deliveries, you want to know what drone is going where and making sure that that stuff is organized. So I, I get the essence of why you need remote ID. I think just the plans that they've proposed are ridiculous. And I think 53,000 other, 53, other people uh, agree with you and me. You know, I, and I think, you know, even even at that 53,000 people and even with the protests that happened there, I don't think that that was enough to really deter to deter them. And, you know, I, I heard stories of I think it's uh, owner of race day quads wants to file a class action lawsuit yeah. when they finally whatever they decide to do. He believes that this is unconstitutional and he's going to file a lawsuit. Is there any is there any balance or or merit to that type of lawsuit happening? Is is that something that he's going to do and maybe fight, you know, a, a valiant effort, but it, all for naught and just a waste of money, you think? I don't know. I mean, we uh, we asked the same question to Brennan Schumann, and he said, you can't really fight anything until you know what the final rule is going to be. Right, so exactly. Start collecting money or organizing or preparing, whatever, that's fine. But until you know what the exact rule is going to be, it's hard to argue against something that you don't yet know. Um, I don't know what the chances are of a uh, class action lawsuit being successful. Um, it wouldn't surprise me one bit that people are going to fight it. Uh, I yeah. think a lot of people are already ready to fight it. And I think that also should be a big concern for the FEA because if in the end people simply aren't going to comply and they just keep flying their old Mavic Pros and just give them the finger, then what use is a rule that is not being used by the, by the general public, right? I mean, then your rule becomes pointless. I think there's going to be a lot of fingers flying when when this happens. I don't think they'd be able to write, you know, put out enough fines for, for how many people are just going to be like, you know what? No. Yeah, and, they, and they also, they don't have the ability to enforce it, right? Right, the exactly. Right. 
tough to enforce it. So so you have all these people breaking the rules, and then what? You're going to tell the regular police officers, like, hey, you see that kid in the park? Go find him. Meanwhile, there's right. somebody on the highway, and he's like, well, yeah, but I've got bigger fish to fry over there. So is he really going to go after the, the kids flying drones? No. I don't know. I, I think the fish, I think, I think for, you know, the guys that produce drone related content like us, we're the fish yeah. in the barrel at this point, because if we don't have, you know, the remote ID on our units or whatever, you know, we're easy to pick off because we're, we're, we're yeah. put out there. But I think for the average hobbyist, uh, they're probably going to be okay because there's so many hobbyists flying and doing their thing that maybe one or two gets a warning. I, I can't see them going right to fine in people, e even if it comes to that. I don't know. I mean, it, the whole situation just really pisses me off to even think about. Same here. I mean, the, the only thing that we haven't mentioned yet is that it's an election year. So depending on what's going to happen on that end, maybe the directive for the FEA changes and maybe, I mean, I think that's a long shot, but I think we have to keep it on the table that maybe hopefully things will change. Yeah. Like they uh, run out of money, hopefully. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> we've been there before. <laughs> um, I just hope they come to the census because I think I most agree, man. want to follow the rules. Most people that I have encountered, they fly safely. They fly responsibly. I mean, if you look at the RC modelers, I mean, they've been flying for decades uh, without any issues. So to to go from that environment to something that's super, super strict and expensive and has all these other privacy concerns and whatnot, um, you better have a good story, I think, if you want to convince people. And I don't see it happening the Fair way. Fair enough. So, bef tell so before right. you go, I want to ask another question. So we were at CES. We were walking around looking at all the booths. Yeah. I got to ask you because I know a lot of people want to know this. So I, I know what I think, but I want to hear what you think. Do you think we'll ever see the Falcon V-Copter? Ha. <laughs> I'm not going to hold my breath. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> you think that was uh, D DOA? DOA. Sorry? You think it was dead on arrival? I don't know. Um, I didn't think much of it at all initially. I'm like, all right, that's another idea, another balloon that goes up and probably yeah. doesn't fly. Uh, however, when I saw the drone take off and I saw how the props would, would kind of rotate, it was cool. I thought that was genius. Yeah, and I could see that, hey, two props versus four props. Maybe you save some battery and power requirements, so now you get better flight time. I get all that part. Um, are they going to make it? I don't know. I mean, we've seen so many drones come out and in the end crash. I mean, uh, remember GoPro? They didn't survive. And no. uh, they seemed like the company that would be able to make it, considering the, the deep pockets that they have and how well established they are. Um, no, I'm not going to hold my breath. I mean, I hope they make it because, again, I think more competition is better for everybody. But I agree. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you know, my, my, part of me thinks that we'll, we'll never see it. And, you know, for them... For them, hate to say it, but this whole virus deal was oh. the best thing that happened to them because one, they got to sit on everybody's hundred dollar, you know, deposit for a very long time that sits there and builds yeah. interest. And you know, you have some people that may have forgot to get a refund on that, and here's this thing, you know, they can just deliver this whenever they want, and at that point, it may cost them a lot less to actually create the drone itself. Kind of starts like a uh, Kickstarter project, doesn't exactly, it? Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm thinking. I, you know, I just can't see buying something to be different. You know what I mean? It doesn't have a great camera. It's got a Mavic Pro camera, Mavic Pro One camera. It's different to just be different, and you know, there's no, there's no defending that. Um, yeah, but what was the other drone that we saw? The we, one uh, shaped like an egg that that flies through the waterfall. And stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I got one. You know where it's been? It's been in the back corner. That's how bad it's been. Yeah, but I think if. We were talking about uh, how drone pilots are impatient and how they are spoiled and want the latest and greatest. I yeah. mean, if you're going to give them something, then yeah, you better give it's them gotta something. Be it's got to be good. It's got to be good. It's got to be better than what they have. Otherwise, uh, it's like why you're even trying. I did talk to the team at X Dynamics, and I yeah. just sort of just, you know, I was because, you know, funny story with them is it's not even really funny. It's sort of tragic. Uh, they go to CES and they were completely robbed. I don't know if they told you the story. Yeah, they were robbed on the way to CES. They stopped for lunch and somebody robbed their vehicle, stole their passports, laptops, and they stole a couple of their prototypes um, from the van. So they were scrambling to get everything that they needed before the event. And then that's a story right there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And then, you know, I, I just shot him an email a couple of days ago and I said, hey, you know, I'm just checking in on you guys, seeing how, you, you know, everybody made it back safely. How you doing with the whole thing? And, uh, and they had said that they're back into production and they are diligently working for a July release. That's cool. I've 
I've seen that drone at a number of events, and it looks legit. It, it, it does. Looks, this one does look, look legit. Yeah, but, I mean, um, looking good and actually flying very well are two different things, right? So you yeah. still have a question mark. I mean, yeah, that's that's a shitty story that their stuff got stolen. That was, that was pretty shitty. Yeah, super shitty. I hope they they come back and I hope they have a great product. Um, I, I I think really they'll they'll put something out. You know, they 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 took you know criticism from the industry last year. You yeah. know, I think better than most because I'm not gonna lie, man. They put it in people's hands and you you had people just beating the shit out of them. You know, and they were sort and they couldn't you know get their hands in front of their face fast enough. Um, to do any, you know, damage control. And I mean, it was a good looking product. It had some problems, but I think the most of it could have been tuned out in software, but then there were some things that you just couldn't fix. It's also a really expensive unit, you know, at 2,500 plus dollars. This one's going to be 3,100 I heard. So it's how many Mavic Air 2s you can buy for that kind of money. I know. I, I, I'm just thinking that if I bought this drone, it better come with a happy ending. That's all I know. <laughs> that's better. that's all i know it better it better be amazing super yeah, cool for, for that kind of money you, you can't be like oh but this doesn't work quite right or we need an update you, you can be critical i think the more drone cost you have more room to be much more critical and it's and it's funny because a lot of people i look at them they start complaining about all the little nuances with the products we have out today and i sort of think to myself i'm like all right we'll step back what do you do are you a professional? If you're a professional, you have every right to 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 make all yeah. these claims or qualms because a lot of it's not even false advertisement. Mm -hmm. You know, they put all the specs, they put everything out there. I, I don't know. I, I just think, you know, as a, as a hobbyist, we are all too critical sometimes. We are. I think I think yeah, we're I think we're definitely spoiled, but I think also that this is where it plays into DJI's hands, right? Because they're able to to build prototypes get the components they need, modify the prototype, and like do that super, super fast. So that whole innovation cycle that they go through is way faster, I think, than with many of the competition. So take, for instance, Skydio. They got a great drone. Uh, it flies amazingly. They had the R1, which I think was back in, was it 2018 already, January? I think it was like, yeah, I think it was 2018. That was still when, uh, yeah, so that, that was, was 2018. It was, a, it was an impractical drone, basically, because right. of its shape and size. But it flew quite well. And then they come up with the smaller one. But it takes, what, almost two years, year and a half. Right, basically. they made iterations to it. Yeah, but now they can make them fast enough to actually get them to people. At the same time, you see DJI. They come out with the DJI Mavic Air 2. And that drone will actually track you as well. And it will also dodge trees and branches and stuff. So it's not as good as the Skydio, but it's a heck of a lot better You're than You're going to have DJI. compromises for portability and affordability. So I guess, I guess but, my next but, question... My point is actually that if, if, if other companies are too slow in either developing or getting their drone to market, then you're going to be caught up with by DJI or other big players if there were any. That, and that's the problem. We don't have any big players. We have nobody. Unique was the closest within you know reach. They were popular at one point. I, I mean, I, I had a Unique drone at, at one point and uh, their customer service dropped off, you know, dropped off and basically, you know, they started firing everybody here in the States. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, and there, there's really nobody, which is sort of crazy that this is a market it, that just never evolved very far, which is sort of shocking. So I guess I got to ask if you had a draft, you're going on a trip tomorrow and you yeah. had to grab a drone, one drone, you can only put it in your overhead luggage. Which drone would it be today? International trip. I don't know. I mean, you want to go international? You got your passport, I assume. All right, international. We'll say international. I will go anywhere. I will go anywhere. Uh, right. One drone that has to do it all? Yeah, it's got to do it all. Ah, oh, fuck. That's not easy. Um, right now, it will be the Autel Pro version. That you yeah. To all right. Maybe, yeah, because I haven't flown it as much yet, and I'm curious to see how good that, that sensor is. Um, it's not the lightest, it's not the easiest one to take with you. So sure. if, if those were things that are important, I would look at the Mini or the Mavic Air 2. Uh, but I think right now I'm most interested in trying out the Autel, so I would probably take that drone with me. Well, here's, here's a good question that somebody just submitted. I like this question. He yeah. said, who's the sleeper of the drone world? Like, you know, Canon's supposed to be right now. Who, who do you think is like the dark horse of the drone industry right now? That's a damn good question. Probably DJI. 
You think DJI is the dark horse? They're the sleeper yeah. right now. You think they got something yeah. more bacon? Yeah, because I think if, if the Mavic 3 is going to come out when I think it comes out, and if it has what I think it's going to have, then... It's I think gonna... you know more than you lead me on to believe. That's what I think. Hey, I'm not getting <laughs> everything up on our first day. Like, come on. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> no, All right. I think that if, if, if that drone comes out the way um, I've heard might be the case, I think it's going to blow us out of the water. And I think a lot of people will jump on that drone. So I think well. that's... because. It's it's a tough question because what else is out there? Where is the potential? I mean, Skydio is not going to come out with anything new right now. That's uh, true. Is not going to come out with anything new. So where is the surprise going to come from? Now, DJI is not the dark horse because we all know them. But I mean, where else is a drone going to come from right now? But they're the only co company that can compete with themselves, if that makes sense. Yeah. They're the only company that That's can compete with themselves right now and still exactly make money. Problem as well right they compete with themselves and they and they actually do do that because you can argue that the mavic air 2 competes with the dji mavic uh, 2 pro and zoom it does. So they, yeah they do compete with with themselves however they compete at with themselves at their own terms in terms of timing specs all that stuff because there's not there's nothing out there it'd be much better if they were competing with themselves and with some other real competition i can so, dig it well good yeah, man i i appreciate you coming on man tonight Appreciate you having me on the show uh, anytime. So I'll be sure to go ahead and include links to Drone XL. Guys, if you haven't already heard of Drone XL, there'll be links in the description below. You guys are on Feedly and all the RSS feeds, I assume, right now. You can get you on, uh, I think, Apple News, uh, Google News. That's all there. And as uh, Google News, not yet. But not yet. If you DroneXL.co, so not .com, .co. .co, DroneXL.co, uh, uh, okay. Social media, you should find us, no problem. Okay, so we'll have the links down below. Be sure to check it out. Like I said, it's really fast news. And how often are you putting out articles? Uh, about six, seven, eight times a day, if not more. So if you didn't get enough crack tonight, you can head over to Hi's website and get a little bit more. Six or seven articles a day, that should be enough for any drone junkie. Dude, there thank you, you so much. I appreciate you for uh, coming on tonight, man. My pleasure, man. Thank you for Take having me. Take it easy, buddy. Uh, good luck with the show and good luck with the whole Corona stuff that we're going through. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Take care. All right. It was nice to have a good conversation with Hi. He's a nice guy. Who said it? I was trying not to laugh, but I kept seeing it in the comments section. Somebody said, what's Elon Musk doing here? I I almost died. I'm not going to lie. I almost died. There is a striking resemblance between the two. And he does drive a Tesla, which is funny enough. But holy shit, I'm not going to lie. I almost died laughing when I read that comment. And that's pretty hard. So that's Drone XL, guys. Like I said, I will be sure to go ahead and throw a link to their website. Um, I think it's super clean. And if you're just looking to get caught up with some of the information that happens um, in the drone community, drone sphere, there isn't a better site right now, um, to go to. It used to be, it used to be drone DJ was pretty powerful, but you know, that is the brains behind drone DJ hate to say it. Um, so be sure to give them some love, check them out. Like I said, six, six to seven articles a day. Holy crap. That's a lot of stuff that is, that is not an insult demography. That is not an insult at all. If somebody said, hey, you look like Elon Musk, I'd be like, all right, I'm going to ride this all day long, all day long for sure. So really good conversation. I think, I think, you know, out of all my guests, I love the perspective there because, you know, his angle on things is so much different than, you know, other YouTubers and, and creators. You know, he's looking at things from a very analytical perspective, which I think is, uh, pretty interesting so all right let's uh let's finish off these beers we've got two beers i've got i'm down to like a quarter of beer in each so we're double fisting at this point and we're just gonna we're just gonna hammer these through because i gotta take a wicked piss um what's anybody got an f-bomb count i just want to make sure we're keeping this show to where it's not applicable for um for anyone under the age of 16, we'll say 16. That may have been more than a quarter. All right, let's fucking do this.
All right. You ever drink so fast that all of a sudden you see these black speckles? They're like sparkles. That just happened to me. Whoa, Nick, hey. Nick, hey. Whoa. I have been following the launch of the space there uh, of Elon's uh, SpaceX launch of the American astronauts. Cause you know, obviously they launch here in Florida. Thank you very much for the super chats. We'll hit the uh, slot machine thing. Helicopter. Uh, if that was the quarter we're a four. Yeah, I think we're at four for the F bombs. Alrighty. Uh, let's finish this one up. We got ready. One more to go. One more to go. Come on, more silver sparkly sparkles in the eyes. Here we go. My wife's going to be happy tonight because I'm not streaming until 1030 and nobody mentioned the Candyman, so we're good. What do you think? You think I could, you think I could do this? I've always seen this. You think I could do it? I think I could smash this on my head. I've never tried. You think I could do it? Who thinks I could do it? I think I could do it. Let me take these headphones off because I think we could do it. FPB. You came for dinner. You stayed for the show. All right. Let's see if we can do this. All right, we'll do it. We're going to do it. That was that was just like a test run. That didn't go well. That that was stupid. That didn't go well. Yeah, did I cut my forehead? Oh, I got a you can see the beer. Did you see Jesus Christ? Why would I do that? Why would I do that? That was stupid. Unnecessary. Unnecessary. All right. That was unnecessary. Waleed, that was right. Absolutely unnecessary. But I've got another one. So maybe if I do it with a hat on, if I do it with a hat on, not better. Not better. Let's try it again. You just got to really commit to it. You just, what you got to do is you got to commit to it. Now, the hat was cheating. The hat was cheating. But if you're going to do it, you're going to crack a can. You got to just do it all right now. My wife's probably watching the stream. She's pissed. She's like, I, I don't know why you got to do those things. It's fine. I'm not a Sox fan. I don't even know what type of fan I am. That's going to leave a mark. That's going to leave a mark. All right. There it is. Whoa. Thank you very much for all the super chats. I really do appreciate it. 9.9%. I'm already four five deep, five deep, four deep. I don't know. That was a great show. I think we had a lot of fun. I was good. The audio was good. <sighs> Lord of mercy. Lord of mercy. I can't wait to see this. I got a permanent tattoo. Jeez, look at that. My goodness. That is red. I got a mark of a beer can on my head. Oh, that's not good. This stream's not going to age well. Not going to age well at all. All righty. Well, there you go. That's the stream. Thank you for watching Drone Brews. I'm going to go ahead and send you all off. China. Oh, wrong button. No, that's not the right button. I'll get it. I'll get it. Um, that button. Um. That button. I'll react if I had to put some things in the past to and don't let them distract you, but react if you have to. Yeah. React if you have to, yeah. Don't know the time, but yeah. just pray that I'm yeah. one of a kind, yeah. What's on your mind, yeah? What hard to find, yeah? Beautiful mind, yeah. Still in my prime, yeah. Just know that I'm here. Yeah.
It's not insomnia, really, I'm not a zombie or thriller I'm moving calmly but ill I'm not playing party or tiller I ain't been partying either Been at the garden and eating Just drinking water and eating It's probably not what you're thinking But I hardly been thinking I feel like hard in this season I know that's hard to believe in And that's just part of the reason I'm catching up to you Because you wait and you sleep And I feel like hard in this season I feel like hard in this season Yeah, too many nights I'ma learn, Usher said to let it burn, but my life isn't his concern I don't talk, so now I don't turn, there's some lessons I'ma 